Hey everybody, Scott O. Green here with David Fleming, and we're here on episode 24 of I'd Rather Be Motivated. Kind of a part two series, we're on part one. David answered the question why he likes to tell stories, and tonight on uh, part two, I'll attempt to answer that monster of a question. Uh, but before we get started, we always kind of do our art check-in, so, and just to say, hey, how's it going, David? Man, it's going great. How you doing, man? It's been two full weeks that we had to kind of do life and skip out on this. I'm kind of excited to get things started. I hear you. Even uh, I am happy that even through like the holidays of craziness, like there were weeks that we skipped and everything, but we still found ways to like still make it happen and get together. Even sometimes we just had a couple personal phone calls just to check in. But I encourage anybody out there who's trying to keep more accountability for their art uh, to do something similar to this. Um, just find a buddy, specifically a person, not just posting on social media, but somebody that you can kind of Every uh, couple of days, like Corey Kerr and Joshua Kemble, they have the 48-hour art check, um, which we kind of borrow heavily from on part of the format of our show, especially here at the beginning. Um, but they get together every 48 hours. David and I, we attempt to get her together every week. I highly recommend it. But, um, but it has been a while, David. And that intro, you guys will have to let us know if you can in the chat how that ended up. Did it sound okay? Did it look okay? That's something that David made, and we've kind of been... Uh, um, struggling with you know making that a priority to see if we can get that up front and hopefully that came through okay but how's it going funny, funny thing that kind of gave me a bit of a laugh uh but my computer the past couple of months has been doing this really weird thing where it tells me to activate my windows and even though it works totally fine and i can see the little watermark in the corner like telling me to activate my windows <laughs> to figure that out I saw that too at first. I thought it was like some cool sort of little like copy uh, copyright trademark where I'd rather be drawing or something yeah. like that. Uh, it's the copyright trademark telling me that my um, Windows is bootleg, but it's not. So. Nice. Hey, and just so you know, I am seeing people out there selling I'd rather be drawing t-shirts and hoodies, and they suck. So we uh, got to get our emblem on some stuff. I got a, uh, a friend at work who has a cricket machine, and she said, just send me the emblem and I'll see what I can do. So just as like a prototype, I thought about having her do that. So That would actually be awesome. And we could just like, like have like a, a one that at least we could wear. I think Sorry, it'd be pretty like... long. Sorry, you were cutting off for just a second. I didn't want to, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I didn't want to interrupt you. What were you saying about? That's about I couldn't tell if we were cutting out or if we were if we were just stopping talking because the other person was talking. All right, go ahead, man. It's all you. Uh, so, yeah, um, we'll just jump into the art check. Like I said before, search 48-hour art check if you want to see Corey Kerr and Joshua Kembles. Uh, I mention them a lot, but they really have some great videos and some great content. But what we kind of borrow from them, um, like very specifically, is they do the three P's, um, progress, problems, and plans. So not specifically, because I don't honestly remember where we were exactly um, last time we talked, David, but what progress in general have you been making on uh, analog missions? I was just thinking about this too, because I, I was like, we're gonna do a check-in, and I don't actually what I was doing the last time we checked in. Um, I actually, but then I did, I, I jumped on our last little video, and um, I was, I just started chapter two, basically. So um, I had just prepped the PDF, which is good to go. It's sent out to our mailing list people, and I've even sent it out to a couple other people just as like a, hey, please check this out kind of thing. Um, it was, I, I, I was so excited. Like, this was like a really cool moment for me, and uh, it kind of sprung me into action for doing more because I had been slacking just a little bit because of just a lot of random stuff happening in my life kind of stuff. I was just like, whatever, I won't draw today kind of attitudes were happening a lot. But getting to see that and then being like, oh my gosh, this is like, this is real. I can put this thing in my hands figuratively, right? Because it's a PDF and I can't really, but the, uh, the first time reading through it myself on my phone after I had like made it into a PDF was like an extremely satisfying moment for me. And it was like, I don't know, there's just this really cool, like I, I, like I said, like I've made little comics, I've made little short stories before, but this is the first time it's felt like of this quality. And I was just really excited for myself. And so then I jumped in. I was, hold on, I'm not actually going to count because I don't know this exact count right now. Uh, let's see. Since we last talked, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine pages, uh, three fully inked 
and the rest at least penciled. That is killer, man. Way to go. And uh, if you guys haven't seen that PDF, it is looking really good. On the next email blast, because we send a, uh, an email newsletter out just kind of once a month to let people know our progress and everything. On the next one, will people still have that opportunity if they're kind of uh, new to signing up? Will they still be able to get Actually, that? Maybe I didn't because this is like a perfect plug opportunity. Um, I figured out a way to make a welcome letter. So anyone who signs up new will get an immediate email welcoming them, saying thanks, and with a link to get the PDF. Very cool. That's awesome. And uh, yeah, yeah, so, so to then, find those new newsletters, uh, there will be a link down below here to our website on idratherbedrawing.com um, to sign up for the email newsletter or on either one of David or my Instagrams, the link in bio. So it uh, should hopefully be pretty easy. And there's always some kind of good stuff around the corner. So future like it was kind of I, I was cool figuring that out because in the future whoever whoever's current project is happening or whatever you know like when you start making yourself change and it can like send people to your hundred days and stuff like that so I, I was, that was a pretty cool little feature I found out about very cool well that sounds like hella progress man nicely done um, uh, hey so, look, oh, I'm not done yet oh my bad go right ahead I sir. also and I'm posting it tomorrow, just finished a full color print as well. So, yes, I've been slaying. So, yes, I've been slaying. Nice. <laughs> you put that on a t-shirt. Um, <laughs> yes, I've been slaying. <laughs> so, right, I don't know. Now wanna... it's over to you. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so, as David mentioned, I'm working on my 100 Days of Making Comics. Um, if you've been following me or looking at the channel for any amount of time, you've probably seen it. Just in case you haven't, uh, what it is is spend a half hour a day for 100 consecutive consecutive days working on your personal comic project and then kind of posting to social media. The creator of this art challenge is Kevin Cross. Um, you'll be able to find his link below as well. Um, but he's the creator of it. has an awesome uh, uh, comic coming out soon called Monkey Modern Friends Show. You can kind of get on the ground level of that right now with uh, some original art that he has for sale and stuff before it kind of makes it big on the newsstand, so check that out. But for the current round that I'm doing, um, if you follow these hashtags, V with two E's, 100s, E100s Anthology, and Werewolves and Unicorns, you're not, you will not only kind of find uh, my progress on my current project, but um, a whole bunch of different artists um, from different walks of life uh, different skill levels, and um, they're all very talented. Uh, but I got accepted to be in a four page, or I'm doing contributing four pages of story um, to an anthology. Like everyone's getting four pages, and the theme is werewolves and unicorns, or the title and the theme is mythical creatures. Um, so I've been working on that story for a while now, and it's kind of like <clears throat> I want to really make it good, you know. So uh, I, I'm putting in my time every day, but not trying to sail along too far. Um, but I've kind of got it right here. I know on this camera isn't the best to show, but since I've got it here, since I'm old school, they sent a template for everybody to use, no matter if they're digital or otherwise. And so I just kind of traced it and taped together two pieces of paper and working on here. Um, there's still some elements I want to put in, um, but kind of deciding where everything's going to go, which, uh, David, uh, one of the cool things about having a partner in crime with art stuff. Uh, hopefully it's going to kind of help me, you know, brainstorm some of the layout for the inking and everything. So these are the two pages I have here. The post I did today was on this guy in the middle. Kind of looks like a leprechaun. He's actually called a cluricon. Uh, a bit different in Irish mythology. There's like a, a few different types of uh, fairy creatures like the leprechaun, but a little bit different roles and everything. So... This is uh, the original character I created for it called Gentleman Jeff Gentry, and he's kind of a Steve Irwin crocodile hunter type of fantastic beast, so it's called Fantastic Geographic. So, um, Rolling on that guy, and I also i have gotten some really good footage for, um, I have one episode out so far on this YouTube channel called Drawing Inspiration, which is kind of a way to fill your creative bank account. Um, if you're kind of not sure what to draw, it gives you ideas. If you need to get out of your wheelhouse of always drawing portraits of people, it gives you some cool scenery or little machinery or lightning bolts or whatever to kind of draw. And uh, so I've gotten some good footage, uh, which I need to turn into uh, episode two, but 
got a lot of good stuff um, since we've last talked for that that I'm excited about. But uh, yeah, I think that's my progress. Awesome. Yeah, man, I'm, I am super excited to see what you got going on with that thing. Actually, that whole anthology's got just a really awesome group of just like uh, really cool artists that I, I, like, I can't wait to support it for many, many reasons. So. Yeah, a lot of people I look up to, and it's kind of uh, surreal at times because <clears throat> I learned about all this through YouTube and the art casters and finding those guys there, Kevin Cross and all, Scott Circlin and Jeff Lafferty and Joshua Kemble. And just kind of listening to their shows while I'm drawing and everything and learning about the art challenge and slowly, slowly but surely as I progress, um, you know, now they're talking about the 100s project because all those guys are contributing to it. And these are guys who have been in the biz, who are working for themselves uh, in cartoonist societies, you know, um, every walk of life, you know. Um, I, I definitely feel kind of like a weak link or whatnot. Um, so I'm trying to bring it for like the little guy, you know. But uh, um, it's, it's intimidating, but with that kind of idea of if you're scared of it, you should probably be running towards it. So right. it's kind of surreal now that like all these guys I'm listening to. Um, yeah, man, we're talking like we're talking about working on the like we're working on the same project. So it's pretty cool. I'm really excited. And um, as it develops in this 100 days, like everybody's got to make their four pages in this 100 days for the contribution. And then as it wraps up, Mike Emirates is kind of the editor on it. Um, and he's doing an awesome job kind of keeping things streamlined. And then it'll go to a big Kickstarter that will encompass, there's like 30 creators in it, somewhere around that, 20 some odd or 30 creators. <clears throat> and so we're gonna have all of those resources, like, and all those people telling all of their crews, hey, look at this, you know, um, thing on Kickstarter. So yeah, um, it'll be another book on the table, uh, another notch in the belt. I'm really excited about it, but yeah, I, I'm, I could just be jumping, in, but I want to kind of take my time a little bit. Sorry, what were you saying? I just wanted to pass it. I wanted to quote you on uh, if you're scared of it, run towards it. That's that's like some that's the advice of the night right there. Um, I enjoy it, and that's something I heard on the 48 hour art check from Corey Kerr. Um, they've really got a lot of good. I know there's a lot of people like us out there just kind of talking about making art. And hopefully yeah. gleam some good information from us once in a while. But those guys are, you know, masters, professors, or teacher. I don't know. They're <laughs> well-educated, very talented, um, uh, good guys. So I urge you to check it out. But, yeah, that's kind of his philosophy. If you're scared of it, run towards it. So that's how I got on YouTube. That's how we started a website. That's how I started going to cons. So Right. I just keep it going. So. I'm um, moving right along. What uh, problems are you kind of running in, running into with everything? Oh my gosh, the ultimate problem, sickness. I have literally, like our house has had someone sick in it since the first of the year. And I like it, it, like just literally have had maybe two days in between every time I feel like that I've been sick this month. I've just caught a different kind of cold or a different kind of thing. I had like I had a stomach thing, and then I had a, this, and then I had that, and then some congestion. You know, it's, it's like seriously, I've had every different kind of sickness you can have in just a month. It is just yeah. Body. It seems like pretty much since you started your semester, um, you're you've been sick. Yeah. Seriously, it, I'm, it's not even down. I'm even like, I'm fighting this one right now, and like still trying to make every day because I'm like, I can't not now. I fell way behind my schedule because when I. I, I'm, not, I'm, no, I'm the definition of like man cold. Have you heard that before? A definition of oh man cold is that what you said? Yeah, yeah. Like nice. I completely become a baby and shut down, but I can't. Like I can't make help much because like the the way I get over things the quickest is just by like sleeping the day off. But I'm like I gotta do this, man. I got I gotta stay up a little late. I didn't get enough done today. I gotta I gotta pencil some stuff out. You know, like. That is the blessing and curse of that drive to, you know, know that you've got to be built, putting a little bit towards it every day. Yeah. And I actually see it with a lot of artists on here because, and, and one of the talks on the art casters recently was about tough love and everything and all that stuff is, is great, but it does, I see it all the time. It does drive people to make sicknesses even worse because they're still trying to like do this boot camp thing of like, no, I'm sick and I'm coughing, I'm throwing up, but I'm still drawing at the drawing table. And that is awesome, but maybe take two days off and get yourself a lot better 
you know so there is a happy medium i think with that which i know oh yeah you give yourself crap about man cold but that's legit you know sleep is one of the best things to kind of get better so yeah it's real it's like i'm not being stupid like i'm still drawing way less because that is super real like i i know very well the like you don't make yourself sick you know but like i am pushing myself more than i probably should but definitely not to the point that i'm like gonna like die and then have my sickness, you know what I mean? Because you do that, then you'll be sick longer, and then you'll be making at half capacity for longer instead of getting back to your full, like, that kind of thing, so. Exactly, word. Is that all but, of your uh, kind of big problems then? Um, another problem, which isn't the worst problem, because I don't know if I'd call it a problem, but I, I, yeah, I'll, I'll get, you know, just for the sake of it, because I'm talking about it now, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think I want to make the book longer than I planned on making it, which I'm allowed to because I'm doing it myself and I'm self-publishing and all that good stuff. So there's no one to tell me I can't make it longer, but that might, like I still want to be in the second week of March going live with the thing. So I'm just kind of looking at my schedule, the possibilities of what I can do and all that kind of stuff. And I'm, I'm, and I'm hoping uh, I guess my like thing for why, why that would be a problem is that like I can't sacrifice quality for that if that makes sense. Yeah, when you put in this much time, I know that deadline means a lot, but when you when you put in this much time making everything look polished, I think ma making sure to keeping on a schedule is good. But yeah, man, you don't want to rush it at the last minute, and then that's when you get like those comics where the art is beautiful, and then it just looks like they use like a not very good program to do the lettering and just sort of did that like in like 24 hours at the end and send it off to the copier real quick. Yeah, that's the exact problem that I don't want to run into. I, you know, I'm on the anime. I started watching this new one called Black Clover and I'm really into it, but there's, there are times where you can tell all the money's going into the action scenes and I'm just watching talking heads and they're like horrible. And I'm like looking at them and they're all like, I'm like, man, seriously, we're just looking at people's faces and mouths move like, I get like skipping through the parts that aren't aren't fun, but like sometimes it really drops me out to like be looking at this face. It's like, dude, come on, man! You draw like we, people draw on the style because because of like the ability to shortcut certain things. But like, put the nose in the right place, man. This is proportion. For sure, word on that. Uh, Ace, uh, the comic then said, uh, Ace comic then. I'm just gonna call him that. Um, <laughs> said you didn't ask my permission. And I always kind of see what people write after what we talked about, and then I forget what they're commenting yeah, about. Yeah, he was, he's just, he's, that's Ace, you know. <laughs> hey, uh, by the way, I do want to mention those guys. Uh, Ace, um, I'm sorry, what's, uh, Knuckles, is that right? Yeah. Ace's last name, Ace Knuckles from the comic down here, and Chris Rao, buddies of ours. Um, they're in the first week, I believe, of a Kickstarter campaign for Magnus the Brave. Um, look it up on Kickstarter. It's already funded, um, but keep that going further. They're going to go through a lag here, so um, I'm going to start kind of cheering them on in this like middle part here in a little bit to see if we can avoid that middle Kickstarter lag. Um, but uh, really talented stuff, and they're two uh, creators that are really, really excited about what they're doing, which I think always translates well to the actual comic book. So Magnus the Brave, um, go check that out on Kickstarter. So yeah, um, so where were we? Were we talking about anything else in particular, or moving on? I'm just kind of talking about that thing, and and it's actually an it, like we could have a whole episode about that kind of thing. Like there's, it's like there there is a time sometimes for quality and a time for quantity. You know, like that's like a huge talk to have. Mm -hmm. I I literally like have that talk a lot with my students. That sometimes it is just like about just getting it out there and making more. You know. It's like a hard thing to argue with too, because the more you draw, the better you get. So if you spend too much time on your drawings, you don't make as many drawings. Are you actually hurting yourself by being a slow creator of not as many drawings? Uh, you know what I mean? There's like so many things to talk about there, but I think absolutely. It's just the and like with everything else, you know, it's balance, right? Kind of want to do it right on exactly, a yeah. three-point perspective. The Jake Parker, Will Terry, and Lee White. Uh, podcast, which is another really good one. Um, most of you are probably listening to, um, and you should. 
Um, but Lee White talked about that. He's like, he thinks Inktober and all these things are really cool with turning out a drawing and a finished product in like one day, 24 hours. It, it teaches you some good skills and everything. But he's like, he, he actually talked about uh, in November, right after Inktober, go with hashtag Slovember, where maybe you take like one <laughs> month to work on like one piece, you know, um, which is like a whole nother skill in itself yeah. to kind of really – um, follow through on something to make it like the best thing that you can make at that point in time. It's good not to get too bogged down and it's not perfect, but it is, I think, good once in a while to sort of go, okay, with everything I've learned so far, what's the best I got? But what, Because what's that whole thing? Like first you get good, then you get fast, then you get good and fast. So I still got a ways on working on the just getting good part. So. Yeah, but I also feel like that might be a fluid thing too because like the my progress lately has just felt like I've been getting fast and I haven't really felt myself get much better lately, but man, I've gotten faster. Like I think about how long it used to take me to make some things like even just a year ago. And I like, I sat down for maybe a two hour drawing session, penciled out like my roughs for like three full pages and they weren't even that sloppy. I was like, whoa, like when did this happen? That, I, I'm like... I'm happy with what I just did in that amount of time. I've never been able to do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm, maybe that's what the amendment addendum or whatever that should be. Not like the whole first you get good, then you get fast, then you get good and fast. Like, I don't know. That I totally agree with that. I think what you're talking about is more a healthy way to become a better artist, which is to learn how to do a thing, then learn how to like streamline your efforts to like do that thing again and do it well. And then you get dissatisfied right. with the level that you're at, so you try to bump up your game and learn how to use new tools and new techniques. And then you kind of make the best thing you can make with that as quick and you know streamline your efforts and make a whole book so it doesn't take three years, you know. And you kind of so it's like that good and fast, good and fast, you know. I think it's just it's not just like one evolution of a lifetime of a skill. It's really like as you get better, that's what's happening at every level is good fast good and fast bump it up and keep leveling up that way yeah. yeah that is real though because i'm already thinking about after the comic like after i'm done drawing this what am i going to do next because and i and i don't want to jump straight into drawing the second one i i'm i'm making a plan for myself to release one a year for of, the, of this like series and so i was like what does that realistically look like and then i was like you know what i think i'm literally going to take like a month off to go back to the drawing board and like you said learn a new skill and hone that skill and then get back into what i you know what i mean absolutely because there is like a the, the thing that i struggle the most with is definitely still like every artist will probably say and agree with me is just anatomy and stuff like that and, and it's like there are, there are things where i'm drawing it in the book and it takes me a couple tries and i have to do some erasing and fiddling with it and stuff and i'm like if i can just take a month off from this and teach myself and look more into this i would take half the time to do this again the next time i made this word i hear that um ace had a <clears throat> excuse me ace had a good question i'd like to stop on for a moment it says how often do you guys get lost in your art just tinkering uh to jump in on that one because i was looking at it for a second a decent amount but i don't think I'm learning that in my way, which learning from talking with some different artists is like in my process, I need a little bit of that time to sort of, it can work against you pretty quickly, but whether I'm writing or trying to figure out composition or where I'm going to put the inks and the light tones and everything, I kind of require a little bit of time to just sort of tinker and look at it and stare at the wall and walk away from it and come back for that oh, I've got it, and then things kind of can can roll pretty quick. Um, but instead of, I've tried to make myself, instead of really just stopping and thinking about it or, you know, not working on something for a few days and just thinking about it while you're at work, you have to kind of keep the tinkering part going and, like, moving stuff and looking at it. And um, So I don't know if that's exactly what you're talking about, but that's just something that in my process I'm kind of learning isn't always a bad thing, like, I kind of need to be able to sort of look at it sometimes to get that sort of not waiting for inspiration to strike to make art, but uh, I don't know, sometimes to kind of do the thing that like I'm really wanting to do, it takes me a little bit to get there. How about you? Dave? Yeah, I think too, as like, I'm sorry, you were done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. go ahead. 
for a second I thought I just did the thing I was doing just butter right in there but um, yeah I think I'm taking the term tinkering too as like how uh, how much of my art creating process is not actually with a pencil to paper so like mine is all beforehand kind of thing I think I do probably like if a drawing is going to take me two or three hours to make um, I probably take about 30 minutes before it starts to really tinker quote unquote and I just like I like spend a bunch of time popping open tabs uh, and like opening books of things that I love and things that I know have scenes and references and things that inspire me and stuff. And then I usually end up building this thing in my head and then I, I can I just go for it. Cause like I have a really good visual memory, but only after I've seen a thing, if that makes sense. Like I, if I open up a whole bunch of stuff and like I can start building this thing where I'm like, okay, that kind of head and this kind of body and it's going to be in this scene right here. And then, like, an entire new scene all of a sudden is built, which is just, that is drawing right there. I mean, I know that kind of defining, like, how you're supposed to build a thing. But, like, I take, like, I cannot just get a piece of paper and start just drawing. And then, like, nothing will come out from that. I have to, like, spend a good, from five to 30 minutes. Get something in your mind's eye a little bit. Yeah, getting something in my mind, and yeah. No, that's cool. And, like, what you're you're talking about with uh, your process is actually something... um, that's sort of touching on something that I was going to talk about with the uh, why I tell stories thing a little bit later. I'd like to come back to, but um, speaking of rabbit holes, uh, Ace followed up with saying like stopping yourself from overworking a piece. Then he says, when I write, sometimes I just go down a rabbit hole um, and my six panels is six issues, which like, that's not always a bad thing. I mean, <clears throat> you do a bunch of excess and then trim the fat. And sometimes you realize that, while this idea is bigger and more important than maybe just a six panel thing or whatnot. But with the thing you said before about like stopping yourself from overworking a piece, I think that is in our kind of uh, YouTube, Instagram creating culture of artists right now. There is the battle cry of finish, not perfect and uh, don't overwork it and that kind of idea and, and move on, get it out there and, and keep moving on and all that's good. And, and once again, balance and within the right spirit and everything. Um, but people like, uh, Seth Mc, uh, not Seth McFarlane, uh, Todd McFarlane, uh, creator of Spawn and Image Comics founder or whatnot, like they got kind of big by like specifically like with his, uh, action figure dolls, he talks about like, all he did was keep working in, um, other people, they kind of make it and go, yep, yeah, looks good. Move on. Well, he was the first guy to go, no, let's like keep making it look cooler. Let's add some more detail. Let's really get those features right. There's no reason they couldn't have been doing that before. They just thought, good enough. It's more important to get it out there in the world and make the next one. So uh, there's definitely, um, I don't know. And I I think with that battle cry of Jake Parker's a finish not perfect, I think that's something that he, as a professional artist, well knows. Um, but I think it's something that possibly gets used as a crutch sometimes for um, some folks more on the amateur side like myself to go, you know what, good enough, let's move on. And sometimes it's like, no, erase it, try to fix it, like really kind of make it work. And I know I struggle with that sometimes and just the confidence to do that. But but yeah, that was a good rabbit hole, Ace. I appreciate it. That's a really good question too. And it's like you said, that is definitely one that requires a little bit more than like that's another one we could almost do an entire episode on, kind of thing. Yeah, a whole debate on finish not perfect and kind yeah. of pitfalls. <laughs> Writing that down. Um, so just real quick to kind of jump back on track, if that's all right. Unless you had any other points to make, David. No, nah, that's a. What's our? Didn't we? Um, we we were basically just at like the problems I've been experiencing lately, which I'll try to kind of sail through pretty quickly so we can kind of get to the topic and see what you guys in the chat have to say about it, but. Yeah. Um, I was, I was going to say, then are we going to end with plans? Well, I think everyone kind of at this point, you know, we really kind of established, like, I'm working on this comic. I'm working every day on it. You're working on your comic. You're working every day on it. Since we've been chatting, I was kind of thinking after problems, maybe just sort of roll into it if you're down. You know what? I'm down with that, yeah. Cool. Um, so, yeah, problems. One um, sort of very real problem that I encountered is I have on my four-page comic, uh, so when I get excited and I drink coffee, I start yelling. I don't know if I'm talking too loud, but um, all right. I try to be perfect. Um, on my four-page comic, there's a, a very specific sort of uh, punchline at the end um, to just kind of wrap it up because um, that's 
in my mind, a four-page comic, that's what you kind of have time for. Just set up for a joke and then the rim shot at the end and wrap it up and get out of there. Um, well, <clears throat> and a, one of the other creators is like basically already done with their um, four pages, which is awesome. They sail through it and they look great. Um, and it's, it's funny and it's cool. <clears throat> it's a story completely different from my own, but that sort of punchline the same device I was going to use to kind of exit my story is the device that they just used to exit their story. Um, and oh, it, no. Yeah, and so it's like, is it one of those things that it's different? I don't know. I, since there's a person on this book, Mike Emirates, who's like, I'm the editor. You know, if you have questions, come talk to me. I'm going to kind of um, I'll make him work for it a little bit, but I was going to talk with him on... Uh, like hang out on like Tuesday or something like that, hopefully just on his thoughts and kind of where I was going and, and what he thinks is editor of a book. Cause me, the first impulse is like, well, you don't want that same thing twice in the same book, um, which I think he'll agree with and possibly kind of same. give me some ideas on how to, sorry. Oh, sorry. I feel like I talked over you. What'd you say? Uh, I no, I was I was just making a passing comment. I was saying like, yeah, in the same book, it, like if you were in the wait, okay, cool, and you move like that would be kind of strange. Yeah, I feel it, and I'll tell you more about it, David, because I don't want, I definitely don't want to like give away somebody else's ending or or because it's a and it works great in their story. I think it would work great in my story, but it's like, you know, for the good of the book, you know, I think I might need to rework some stuff, which. I don't think I'd have to rework from page one, but it, you know, I was kind of planning, even in that just four page thing, trying to plant a little bit of a seed for later on that I, I might need to kind of think about. So we'll see on that. So that's yeah. kind of like a very real physical problem. One that's like a little bit of like the artist getting stuck in your head is, uh, I think every artist deals with it to one degree or another. Um, but just like that negative self-talk stuff, um, I was like at different points this last week, just having a real hard time with, um, I kind of, and some days it's kind of minute to minute with like, all right, I'm working on my dreams. I'm excited about what I'm doing, building foundation. This is great. And then like, you know, then those voices start kind of gnawing at the back of your mind of, you know, you're not getting anything done. You're not getting very far. And you know, how are you going to keep up? And this isn't going to, you know, all of that stuff um, for me kind of uh, confidence, what I'm doing currently has been one of the things to kind of like give me the most confidence in my life because it's something I've always sort of struggled with a bit, but it can be sort of fleeting sometimes in that same way. I think I do pretty good at getting over it and realizing when that's going on. Um, but there's also like very, you know, real things and concerns with how much you can get done in this life, you know, when you have things like work and other obligations and responsibilities and stuff. So, that was right. kind of gnawing at me pretty good this last week, two weeks or so. And uh, I also deal with, uh, I haven't had like an actual panic attack in quite a while, um, but did have several um, when I, around the age of like 30 or so. So kind of had to start dealing with that. So for the most part, it's just kind of like that ebb and flow of anxiety sometimes, which for the most part I can deal with pretty good and have ways out of it. But with work and different stuff going on, it's just kind of been a, sort of always a little bit bubbling on the surface here lately, um, which I think definitely had something to do with that um, little voice in the back of my head. Um, but, uh, but yeah, you know, like I said, I think I'm able to kind of keep that in perspective for the most part, but, and I think a lot of people deal with that, but it's definitely been gnawing at me a bit lately. But yeah. So I don't know if you guys deal with stuff like that. If you do, um, I think it's kind of good to like holler out about stuff like that and, you know, just sort of, you try to keep it all inside. And everyone's always like, fake it till you make it and everything, but especially among us artists and everything. I'd be interested if uh, any of you guys kind of have issues with that. But, but yeah, those are kind of the problems to, uh, dealing with them and moving on, right? Not to uh, tangent again, but I think that's super real what you said, which is like the, the best way to deal with that kind of stuff is to just tell somebody else and like actually get it out there and not just like stewing it inside your own head, you know? Absolutely. I've kind of found that I think with um, things like depression or anxiety and panic disorder and things like that, there's this compulsion, which like if you're feeling like faint or sick or you're going to throw up, most of the time you go, hey guys, I'm sorry, I don't feel so well. I need to sit down. 
when people are dealing with like anxiety building up or like a depression thing building up, I think there's oftentimes this uh, um, compulsion to like just keep it all inside. Everything's fine. Don't freak out. If you tell someone that like acknowledges something's going on and that makes it more real and I can't deal with that. And then it's just like this right. is feeds this monster that grows inside of you or whatnot. So I think in a lot of ways dealing with that stuff, I mean, just on a, you know, Fraser Crane talk show kind of way, you know, like just honestly, even sometimes I think just saying out loud, like, man, I don't know why I'm so down on myself. I've accomplished this. I'm going to be in this book, man. Just whew, let it go. I think sometimes really just voicing that stuff out loud helps a lot. Kind of release that pressure valve. Yeah. That's, I mean, that, Every time you bring it up, I'm like just stoked that you like. That's a really cool thing to be a part of is being to be invited along and like a thing like that is like a like what he said. You're kind of, I think that's why you're probably the most in your head right now. And if, if you want to use the word dreams and not to be in a cheesy way, but like you you this is a thing we've all we all both always wanted to do. I've always wanted to do it the way I'm doing it, independently making awesome an audience to my own way and do this cool thing. And you've always wanted to be a bigger part of a bigger group of artists making you know what I mean? Like you I like you're literally doing the thing that you've started on these past couple of years to get a part of and you are. Thanks man, I appreciate that. It's pretty exciting and um here recently I don't know, once in a while and I think you probably encountered this too um, uh, what we're doing affects other people around us sometimes in ways we don't realize. Like sometimes I do get lost in my head and I feel like I'm just going home each night to just kind of work on my pretty little pictures and, and post social media like another turd out there, you know. Um, but here recently, like yeah. a friend I went to grade school and high school with um, paid me like, I don't know, to me it was a really huge compliment, um, like for sure. Uh and I don't, I don't know. Think inspiring is like the right word or whatever. But just kind of seeing me like working on the stuff that you know he's known me since you know fifth grade. Like when I was drawing little pictures all day long instead of paying attention in school, and uh, um, just kind of mention that like seeing me working on this stuff has helped influence him to kind of go back to his passion, which was like opening up a music venue and everything, and. Uh, like stuff like that is like huge. Like that's really really cool. And it's not like yeah. you saw me. You know, it's not like you want like when you watch Rocky and you're like, I'm gonna go work out. I don't think it's anything like quite like that. <laughs> but I think when people do see us, you know, not letting the world kind of stomp us down, but kind of keep pursuing that stuff and keep going. No, nope, I like what I'm doing and I'm proud of it. I want you all to take a look. You know, make it and tell everybody. Right. I think that does inspire other people, uh, besides just artists sometimes, which I think is really cool. So thanks to that duder out there for that compliment. That kind of was something that sort of helped me in my state of, I can't do anything. But, um, so our topic for the night, <laughs> um, which we're kind of a ways in, uh, I don't know if I did this uh, subconsciously on purpose to like, like avoidance or anything. Cause I've been thinking about it for a while, but uh, it's kind of a big daunting subject, but, um, if you look back at episode 23, which I encourage you to do, David answered in part one of this, uh, why do you tell stories? Not like a proverbial, like, why do we all tell stories, but you, why do you tell stories? Um, and uh, so tonight I'm supposed to answer that question, and I just stuttered because I looked over. Uh, regarding the last thing, Ronnie said, uh, so true, Scott, you know I don't have it, but my um, wife suffers. Uh, with some different issues, and uh, I know Ronnie, like you, kind of see that stuff firsthand, and and uh, I, I even think you know people like yourself in households with things like that going on. That's still something where like you want to be like the strong one. Uh, I my my wife deals with depression as well, and I feel this compulsion to be the strong one and not let her see if anything's going on. Um, but yeah, I think you know letting people know what you're going through is always a good thing. So anyway. Um, yeah, man, back to the story thing. I guess I should just jump in, right, David? Therapy session for the night, guys. You can pay us later. What'd you say? I said that wraps up the therapy session for tonight. You can pay us later. I know, right? I feel like, uh, is it uh, Lucy from Peanuts? I had the booth that Charlie Brown always went up to, his five cents, but... Yeah. But anywho, <laughs> Ski, so yeah, it's it's an intimidating subject, why we tell stories and everything. Um, 
what did I boil it down to? So I really try to think about it. And like if there's like noble ways to talk about like I want to be part of like a storytelling tradition and there's more like I think uh, vain ways to sort of automatically think about it or talk about it as well. And I think there is it's somewhere in between on good and bad days of, hey, everybody look at me and I have a talent that I'm excited to work on and grow and be part of this tradition and everything. Um, and just being honest, I think there's a little bit of all that. Uh, like comics and storytelling in particular is a bit of a, a form of <clears throat> here I am on stage, everyone be quiet and listen to what I have to say. And I think some of that stems from like when a comedian makes a person laugh. Like I'm not a comedian, but you tell a funny story and someone laughs or is engaged or asks, starts asking you questions about it. That's like a high that like you can't imagine. Like it's just, you know, when, when you're making people laugh or interested in something, especially if it's something where you're not just telling them what happened, but you know, like us, we're making up stories, you know, and to really kind of make up a lie that really gets people into it, I think is pretty interesting. Um, but a lot of us who draw and everything, I think, start off as um, kids in school who we were like that kid in class that could draw one of a couple or whatnot. And you'd just be doodling and then someone would walk by, you know, uh, the cool kid in class or a pretty girl or a cute boy or something and, and go, oh, cool, what's that? You drew that? That's really neat. And suddenly, like, you're kind of on stage. You didn't even have to, like, stop and go, hey, everybody, look at me. Look what I can do. You just sort of do your thing and all of a sudden you've kind of got this attention looking at you and, and looking at what you're doing and uh, I think there probably is something for any entertainer and when you're a storyteller you're an entertainer and I think there is a little bit of that whether it's vain or whether it's noble and like I said I think sometimes it can be a little bit of both depending on the person I don't think that there's anything wrong with it um, there's obviously those people who like just love to be the center of attention in the life of the party and and that stuff can get old, but when we're talking about kind of making different parts of art and everything, that quote we talk about from Dan Barry, make it then tell everybody, that's kind of essential to like, to art and creation and connection, I think as humans is, uh, like I, I was making music with some buddies um, kind of in my past life when I thought like I was supposed to be making music, you know? And they had this weird philosophy about stuff that, like, just the experience of us doing it in a closed room with each other should be what it's all about. Just that creation of something. Like, why do why should there be a need to, like, go perform it for other people to get, like, pats on the back? Like, that's just, like, you know, really, like, a nasty thing or something like that. And um, I think that's just such bull. Um, and if you're going to be wasting – not wasting – if you're going to be spending so much time making this thing – then go tell everybody, share it with somebody. Um, I, I just It just seems like the next logical ex, uh, step in just experiencing life. So anyway, trying to get over that kind of phase of life and get to a point where it's like, no, I do want everybody to kind of see what I'm doing and see that I'm doing this. It uh, seems like kind of a natural part of it, if that makes sense. I'm definitely going on some different rabbit holes as I weave around this hard subject, but don't know if that's making any sense. Um, but as far as just kind of like, I think what, like the DNA of me and, and why I do it or whatnot. Um, another part I think of why I'm a person who wants to be part of the storytelling thing is we were talking about the tinkering before and David, you were kind of talking about it as like a form of play in a way. I think you even kind of mentioned and to kind of get ready for this, I listened to a guy who was like this professor just talking about the generic of why we tell stories. And uh, one of the things he talked about is it's kind of, as you go into an adult, it's kind of the, I don't know how he said it, but it's our version of play. Um, to sit at a table and fabricate drawings and make up these plans and fulfill this thing and then like hand somebody, you know, a joke or, you know, a piece of theater or literature is kind of our equivalent of play. And I think I was, oh, I think I just want to keep playing, you know? Um, people talk about, oh, when did you start drawing? And the kind of goofy artist answer is, when did you stop drawing? You know, we were all kids with crayons and markers drawn on anything we could, sidewalks and bathtubs and, 
anywhere we weren't supposed to and everywhere we should and couldn't get enough of it. And then at some point you have people going, oh, you're not really supposed to do this. You're probably supposed to be a science kid or you're supposed to be a book kid or a, a music kid. You're not an art kid. And so people kind of lose it. And since I did have a little bit of that encouragement of, oh, okay, then you're an art kid. Um, I think that's just a way that I can make sure to keep playing. Um, I don't know if you had this experience, but when you start getting allowance and, you know, having to save up to like buy toys and stuff and then not knowing if you wanted this toy or that toy and you really had to kind of start making those really tough decisions. Me, I was like, man, when I get a job like my brother and my parents, I'm just going to spend so much money on toys. And uh, <laughs> some people do in their own adult ways. But when I was a kid, I didn't mean in like gadgets and like sports cars and stuff like that. I just meant like more G.I. Joes and cool stuff like that, you know. And I do have like kind of my dork corner over here where I've got little figurines and stuff. But honestly, I don't, even if I wanted to, like, it's just not the same to take them around, you know, and play and stuff. But like, for me, storytelling, I think, is how I keep playing. And I think that's a, I think that's a big reason why, why I do it. I don't know if that, does that make any sense? Yeah, no, I actually, it's funny because I was actually just listening to a different sort of podcast book thing about and the guy was talking about that word play and like kind of what it means and stuff like that and it's it's, it's an interesting thing because it is it's like um entertainment and what it exists as and then like the act, the act of drawing and playing music and how like we call it playing music and stuff like that and how like that word is used so interchangeably with like other things in adult life so yeah, I totally, I, I'm totally with you. I actually, the thing I love the most that you said was the make up a lie. I don't even remember if you remember saying it or, or in the context of it, but you were like, when we like sit around and we like, we make up these lies that we want other people to believe. That was actually kind of like my favorite part of that because that's like, I had a professor who you, who he started, I don't know why I remember this, but it was like the first day of drawing class. And he was like, he told us that uh, drawing is a lie because literally your is to make up the most convincing lie you possibly can so that others believe it and they don't question you and that's how you make a good piece of art basically it's like of a like of this you're right i'm making a drawing of mario or whatever of a can or of a chair it's not actually a chair or can or whatever it's a drawing of that thing like from the beginning you're just telling a giant lie i don't know i just that's like a really interesting philosophy of mine for especially for telling stories too like well, it, it makes, makes me sense so much to me. believe in this world that I'm creating that you. It, yeah, it makes yeah. good sense to you, me. You don't question any of it. You just wrap yourself up. Sorry, I don't know if it was me or you, but cut in just a, in and out a little bit there. But I think I get what you're saying, and I like the I like kind of thinking about it as a lie, just because it seems kind of. Uh, well, like childish, like a lot of times lying is childish. And I think it's a little bit just more of playing and, and pretending and stuff like that. But I think the, the I think bonus of more. being a storyteller is uh, like when people go to the movie, unless they're the turds who like hate the movie before they go and they just want to rant about it. But anyway, generally, if you're going to the movie, if you're picking up the comic book, <laughs> you already want to believe the lie. Like you're already going, OK, I'm in. I'm on the ride. I'm buckled in. Give it to me. So, like, in that way, you already kind of have um, somebody's participation, which I think is pretty cool. Um, what else? On the other, oh. on the other side of that, though, there is the... On the other side of that, there's, like, you didn't convince me, though, and you lost me. And I, and I think that's what another thing I love about it, too, is, like, you are... It's like you said, you got on that stage to perform or whatever, like... You, you, yeah, from the beginning, they're with you, but like, and I think it's where a lot of anxiety and stuff that kind of stuff comes from is like, what if I'm not telling good enough of a lie? Right. It's like if you're a magician on stage and like you let them see like the mirrors and the and the fog machine, man, you gotta like they want to believe the magic, but they're not stupid. You know, you, you got to be good, and that's where like that whole uh, <laughs> working on your art comes into play is is you got to make sure that they don't see the sleight of hand. But I thought as a way to plug my own book here real quick, since we're talking about lies, um, this is Mr. Green's Monster Zine, which if you click the link in my bio on my Instagram, it'll take you right to it. And it comes uh, with this uh, uh, mini comic book, 
um, this print of all the different monsters and then a sticker on the back. But um, it all started from a single drawing of uh, this character right here, um, which it was just really late at night and I did a weird character thing. And then when I posted them on Instagram, I just made a goofy story to go with it. Um, and it was just the first one. I didn't have any plans. And at the very end of the post, I wrote, because I you know, wrote this story, this whole backstory. At the end of it, I, I just wrote, I couldn't sleep, so I made a mess and told a lie. I feel better now. So that's the thing that like, I kind of put on the very last page of the book. But pretty proud of this one. And thanks, Red. I appreciate it. He picked up one. And uh, so, yeah. So each page kind of has a monster with another story right here. And it was just a, another example of I'm not a person that wants to just draw pictures of things. Like I want those pictures to be stories, you know. Even if this story wasn't here, why I love this guy is it makes you kind of go, what is he? Where does yeah. he live? What's going on with that guy? Like I don't want to just draw cool pictures. I want them to convey story. Like that's that's what I love, you know, is is the lies, you know. I want to believe them. I want to escape through them and everything. And I love it. Um, and then uh, I think something that... Like I kind of talked to you about this a little bit, I think when you were on and I think you talked about like some key uh, like experiences that you shared as a family. Like I was kind of pressing if there was like a, an individual person that was like that storyteller in the family. And I think you had talked about a few different interesting movie things that as a family you guys kind of all shared that had like a real big impact. And that kind of caused me to ref caused me to reflect on like the why do I tell stories as well. Um, I grew up in a family that ended up getting divorced. It was mom, dad, brother, and I. And parents got divorced, and brother was older and troubled teenager. So there was a lot of times as the youngest that, like, I was playing peacemaker a little bit and, uh, um, and just kind of living that role. And I think with that, those type of people can kind of turn into people that want to be liked by everybody. Um, peacemakers, they just want everyone to have a good time and relax and, you know, they don't really want confrontation and all that sort of thing. So along with that kind of, you know, side thing here is with that same family that was, you know, a crazy family that I love but had, you know, rough times. It's something that all of us shared um, is a love for, like, movies. Uh, and, like, we're one of those families that, like, as we talk and communicate, it's half the time through, like, different cornball movie lines. Or if like a person on you know out there says something, one of us it makes us think of something. We say it, and then the other ones laugh, and everyone's like, "You guys are weird." But it's like that connection. I think that story did for my family of kind of bringing together. You know, even to the point where like sometimes when you have a troubled family, you kind of learn what to do on the holiday. And for us, sometimes on the holidays, it was like. You know, all like the fun of gifts and all that, but like, let's always bring over a movie. Sometimes if we're just sitting around the dinner table, that can lead to like some of the arguments and stuff because people think really different thoughts about stuff. So you learn little peaceful ways of resolving that. And for us, it was kind of through story. So I think there is a little bit of that that bleeds over with that kind of the vein part of the, hey, everybody look at me, you know, um, that once again, I don't think is always necessarily a bad thing, but a little bit of a personality thing ingrained into me of really enjoying the con the connection of story because like on a bigger level of why we tell story like that's it is like to connect with other people whether it's to tell them about our day or to make up a tale that they all get into it's like to connect with like other humans and everything um I won't lie, I kind of brain fart a little bit on where I was going with that but but yeah just like I, I think yeah okay that I think that's just something that is why I tell stories is is that um, peacemaker, you know, through story, you know, just want everybody, whether it's to like me or like the characters now that I'm putting on the page, you know, I want them to like that person a lot. I think, I think that all kind of goes into, you know what I mean? Yeah, and, it, and it's also like, I mean, not to speak for you, but it could be another one of those like, wouldn't it be awesome if one of your stories gave that feeling to, to another family too? Like, they made, they, they made peace with each other watching your movie, you know? Absolutely. And I think exactly what you're touching on there is kind of part of the third thing that I think drives a lot of performers and storytellers specifically, and myself as well, is that idea of legacy, of leaving something behind um, for others. And innate in that is, you know, it won't, it won't stay, 
behind after you leave if it's not received by somebody if it didn't make some sort of a difference in somebody's life then it just won't matter so once again it's not just enough to do it you've got to press yourself to like want to do it well and everything but yeah so like you know my wife and i we're not we're not wanting to have kids which just boggles some people's minds but sorry it's just something that we're not we just don't want to have kids whatever and uh when i was growing up i think you automatically think in terms of when I have kids, um, I'll save this thing that my dad gave me so I can give it to my kids when I'm older, you know, mentalities like that and everything. And with that is even stories. When I was a kid and hearing my dad and my older brother stories about getting in trouble and laughing about getting out of the trouble and everything, I was just like, I want my stories, you know. I want to leave behind memories so when, you know, I live far away or I'm dead and gone, my friends can go, oh, my God, remember that time, Scott, dot, 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 you know. Um, it's not just entertaining. It is like to leave some sort of legacy behind. Um, and I think maybe something with that and me, I don't know if that's because like around 30 or so is when I really kind of start kicking into high gear with that. Got to do something with my life. And part of it is just like, I think the ticking clock of, of life in general and, and knowing that things take time. And I think part is maybe something as well of knowing that like, I'm not going to have a kid to go, well, back when I played football, this happened and this happened. And so I did that, you know, and, and sort of tell like the traditional stories. If I want to leave something behind, I got to make up a really good lie, <laughs> you know, and uh, make yeah. it colorful and make it really pretty and try to put it in as many people's hands as I can. And uh, hopefully at some point, you know, in a hundred years, somebody will pick up something that says Scott O'Green on it, you know, and that idea to me is kind of thrilling and pretty cool, you know, and the idea of, uh, so, like, after my dad died and different people die, like, one of my philosophies is, is, like, the stories is what keeps them alive, you know? So, like, just now, I just mentioned my dad died. That sometimes makes people go, ooh, sorry, you know? And they kind of get uncomfortable. They don't want to talk about it. I'm like, it's okay. I'm not asking you to do that. I'm just mentioning it because it's just a matter-of-fact thing to me. And it's reminding me of the story I want to tell. And just that simple act it is how people stay alive, you know, whether you're telling them to your own kids or to strangers or whoever, you know, um, in a more metaphysical way. I think that's uh, uh, that legacy reason, I think, is kind of important to people for one reason or another. And I think that that not having kids thing might be a contributing thing to possibly why I think it's important to leave something behind. You know, I'm not sure. I think that's most of what I thought through on it. I didn't think I'd have that much to say, but once I get a cup of coffee and start babbling, it's kind of hard to, to shut me up or whatnot. But um, Ace, you're out that's there, right? I want to ask you, you've gone from somebody who loves reading comic books. The Comic Den, if you guys are, are watching here, he's got a great uh, um, YouTube channel kind of reviewing comics that are happening right now. It's really cool, really informational. Um, but he's made a leap here recently, like I talked about before, with our uh, art buddy Chris Rao to like be writing comics and write a story. So um, whether you answer it here or on your show, um, Ace, I'd be interested. Like, what makes you want to take the leap from reading the stories to now going? No, I want to be on this side of the table. I want to tell people my stories. I'd be interested to hear that. But yeah. Man, what do you think? Yeah. This is where we just sit here now. We just let him type out a response, and we just like say it silently. Is that what we're gonna do? I know. Play that intro again. Let's hear that theme music one more. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I should have asked that sooner or whatnot. But uh... okay, A says it's no, a bucket list item for sure. I've always wanted to write. Hell yeah, dude. Um, I think that's one of the greatest reasons to do it. I always wanted to. There's something you want to get done before you die. Here's your next therapy. Run towards the fear. Go do it. I also love his um, comment that he made. I don't know if you realized it, but he, he was saying that his reason is to get rich. <laughs> Hell yeah. You got to sell your stories, even if you got to sell out. Um, he also says it's yeah. something me and my dad shared. Um, they both love books. And, I, and that's where I was uh, kind of touching on before and why I think I was pressing you when you were talking about your love of storytelling. For me, there, you know, uh, my mom, she's good at telling stories too. She's crazy. So it always kind of is fun for us to hear. Um, and she's good at 
and she can talk to anybody. And my dad was a real good storyteller. I have like those uncles that uh, something Corey Kerr talked about, like when you're in a room full of chattering people on a holiday and then you see like your dad who you already kind of look up to and idolize sort of silence a room by just telling a story and then the whole room erupting into laughter and everything that leaves a mark on a kid. And, you know, my dad was one of those larger than life dudes. It's, it's hard to kind of live up to sometimes, but Hey, what's up? Squatchy Inc. Um, thanks for popping over from, I've seen you in the art casters where it says me and my buddy used to draw ourselves in little comics we made, uh, but took me till I was 34 to actually get in gear though. What do you think uh, kind of pushed you at that 34 mark? But now just keep at it. I hear you, man. Keep on keeping on because uh, um, it really takes that little bit of work every day. And I know for sure one of the things that kind of always talks me out of my funk of like, oh, it's just a little bit each day. It's never going to add up is uh, kind of knowing that if I hadn't been doing anything over the past two, three, four years, I feel really crappy about myself. So. An opposite sort of thing, too, for your brain is to think about all you have done over the past uh, two to three years, man. Like, it already has ended up, you know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. I have, I've, with the confidence thing, I think I've always really struggled with, like, remembering what I have accomplished and where I have gotten. I always kind of had this feeling of, like, I only have, like, what I just did and, like, that's it. Yeah. And you are, there is this like you're only as good as your last drawing, but kind of not really. You are an accumulation of everything, and really, do, and I like looking back. Like some people are like, "Oh, I hate looking at my first comic. It's so ugly." I have love for all that stuff. You know, those are my children, and even when you see the potential for them to be better, like I still love all those things, and ha be happy to show anybody those things. Um, this is awesome. We're, at, we're like, towards the tail, towards the hour mark of the show. We're getting some really awesome uh, stuff in the in the comments here. Um, but after uh, Squatchy Inc. said, but now I just keep at it, Ace says, he knows, uh, he says, I know I love the escape of a great story, and I'd really like to bring that to others. I think that's a great way to sum it up, because I do too, and I think sometimes there's this idea, especially with people like Bill Maher talking about how, I don't know a whole lot about it, but he, he trashed comics, and to me that's stupid. That's like trashing books or movies or something like that, but... Um, I think sometimes it's like uh, not as highbrow to be making up stories, you know, but to, you know, like the fiction stuff. But I think there's something hugely awesome about the love of escapism and everything and uh, the value in that. And Squatchy Inc. says, what up? Nice to see you. He says, finally writing my ideas down and writing the story. Now all I got to do is draw since the writing is thumbnails and are done. That's awesome. And which story are you working on? Like a particular one or about a particular thing? I have to remind me. But yeah, that's the best thing. Everyone's got their masterpiece they need to be working on. So keep going. So I got to ask, David, you're all zoomed in really close on that thing. What are you working on? That's the sound of my computer is up. <laughs> Uh, this is another. I, I'm. I got. I'm only get four new prints done before March at the end with uh, with uh, Planet Comic Con. This is my be my second one. So, trying to get my class laid in on this piece. I like how you. That's probably a thing that everybody knows. But how you kind of put your palette right on the paper there, so you can quickly kind of sample oh, yeah. those colors. That's been a uh, talking about like taking a step back and doing studies. Uh, one thing I I did last year was just general like. Um, like color theory kind of study stuff and things like that. And like, I know we talked about this in a previous one, but like I built like a color palette of neutral kind of tones and things that I, I loved by literally sampling colors from uh, animes and movies that I love. I like built a color palette based on the things that I always see that I think are aesthetically pleasing basically and kind of moved colors around until it really started like Okay, those go go good together. Those go good together, and I kind of made groups of like primary, secondary, and saturated, and most saturated colors and stuff. So, it was a, this was like a full weekend of my life, just kind of playing with color palettes and stuff. And so I kind of use it too, to, kind of as a secondary, and then I take them and mess with them and make them work for the for the actual composition that I'm working on. It. That's cool. awesome. Yeah, that's the stuff you gotta like take time to stop and like do things like that where. 
sometimes I feel like, no, I just got to keep drawing the story, keep working on the thing. But like, like you said, it took a weekend to kind of build that, but how helpful is it now? Oh my gosh. Yeah. I love it. I, I even, sometimes I only sampled a couple of times and I go, I get, I've gotten in a zone sometimes where like, I just know my colors too. I'm able to pick them, but yeah, it's like, it, it, it was, it's, I don't want to use, say the word crutch because that's not the right answer for it, but it is, it's like this, it's this thing that I can just like lean on when I need it and all that extra little back end has saved me tons of time when I'm ready to do my class. Well, it's turn out good, man. I've, I've seen a lot of people digging that print online. Um, I think they're going to dig it. Uh, so we yeah, have a couple more comments really here. Nice. Oh, sorry. No, I was just saying, yeah, I was like really excited. Like, I can't wait to post the finished piece of that because just my flats people were getting super into it. And I was like, just you wait, boys. It's going to be good. <laughs> it's going to rock. Uh, Ronnie Gunter um, got on there and he says, he, uh, I know my writing and art uh, is something that he's born to do. He believes he's born to do. Seeing kids learn and use their imagination is a great thing to see. Yeah, I encourage all of you folks out there just to check out somebody who made something cool. Um, also, uh, it's a cool story. And if you've got any young ones or anybody kind of learning to read and all that sort of stuff, he created an app, uh, The Sagas of Starsville. Uh, we'll try to link to that there as well, get all those in. We've talked about a lot of different people, so I'll try to get that updated as quick as I can. But uh, um, I think that's an important thing and that, you know, something that you were born to do on our website. Um, I'd rather be drawing.com. We have a section of free uh, comics that you can look through on there. And one of them is one I did for an assignment on in a class that Dave and I took called comics, art and relationship. And it was kind of like an autobiog autobiographical thing about you and sort of and like why you tell stories or why comics or whatnot. And it's just a little two page comic called the skin I'm in. And it was a little bit of that. It's like you go through different parts in your life, trying on like these different suits going, you know, am I an, am I an athlete? No. Am I, am I a painter? No. Am I a businessman? No. And then like you try on something like storytelling or being an artist and it just kind of feels right. Um, and I think that's pretty awesome, man. So I'd say definitely go with that feeling because I like what you're doing. And I know that you're already working on book two. And I'm excited to see that, man. Back to Squatchy Inc. who was talking about uh, working on uh, their comic. Uh, says it's a superhero horror, which I think would be a really cool thing to see. Um, he said, think the TV show heroes. Uh, oh, okay. Think the TV show heroes meets the movie The Thing. That's a great selling point right there. I'd be in. Oh, yeah. And then Red yeah. said, that's a great storyline, Squatchy Inc. And he says, thanks, I think so too, or they think, I'm not sure, actually. Um, but yeah, that sounds cool. Keep us updated. Um, I'll try to make sure, I don't know if we're already subscribed to you or not, but we'll try to make sure we do so that we can keep updated on that. And yeah, like I'm, the, the idea for this, the, the two-parter of why we tell stories is something I totally lifted off of, once again, Joshua Kimball and Corey Kerr and the 48-hour art check. Because at the end of it, they said, you know what? This is a fun topic, and we're really interested in what you guys think. Uh, so make a video and tell us what, you know, why you guys make stories and everything. So I'd be interested in that from all of you out there. Um, and if you do, link it to us. We'll link it to them. And uh, maybe we can just keep this idea topic rolling because I think it's a really good one, man. But uh, that's about all I got, dudes. So I, I yammered as much as I think I physically can. You do like the yammer. It's almost like we haven't talked in a while, so I had extra stuff to say. Yeah, right. But uh, I really appreciate you guys out there in the, um, the chat and everything. The live chat really kind of makes these things a lot more fun. And it's not just me babbling. Um, but I really appreciate you folks stopping to take a look. If you get a chance to share this on any social media you like, um, if you want to subscribe, like, follow, uh, comment, all that stuff really helps us. And uh, I, for one, re on Instagram recently just kind of celebrated with a giveaway of free comic books, kind of just getting 500 subscribers. And that might not seem like a lot to a lot of folks, but um, honestly, every single person, every single like, all that stuff 
really helps us on uh, with the confidence and on our road to, you know, trucking forward every day. You know, all that stuff that comes in is just, it really is kind of like a little extra pat on the back. So if you guys are able to do that with us, thank you, Red. I appreciate you as always. Um, yeah, we always appreciate that, man. Um, when we're not here on our YouTube channel, uh, where can we find you, David? Uh, yeah, I mean, not hanging out with us, doing our thing. Uh, you can find me at Art of Mr. Fleming on Instagram and Mr. David Fleming on Facebook. Um, and also in my Instagram, there's a link tree with a whole list of just like shop, YouTube, all the good stuff, anything you need to do. Subscribe to our newsletter. All the good stuff to get plugged in and check my stuff out and keep up, updated on analog missions. Beautiful. I love it. That's analog missions. Search that stuff. Um, it's a great title and an even better story, so check that out. Um, I am artist Scott O'Green from I'd Rather Be Drawing. Um, when I'm not here on YouTube, you can find me on Instagram a lot. That's kind of where I am a lot of the time, whether it's IGTV or just on uh, the main feed or the stories. And it's Mr. Green Draws, Mr. Green Draws. And then on Facebook, search I'd Rather Be Drawing. You'll find stuff from both of us uh, on there as well. And uh, hopefully here sooner than later, we'll have some t-shirts. I think uh, I think some people really kind of agree with that I'd rather be drawing sentiment. So we'll get that rolling for you guys. But do you have any closing remarks, good Sir David? Uh, I, I, when you were talking and doing your thing, I wrote another thing down. It's kind of been my thing because when we get on our tangents, I feel like we, we both do it. Like there's no stopping us. And so I have to like write things down that you say when I'm like, oh, I want to say something about that, but I can't interrupt him yet. Go right ahead. Um, you uh, you said the thing about like it felt right, like the skin you're in kind of thing. I kind of thought about that too in terms of like we. I talk always about like all this extra work I put into all this, but even when I'm doing that, it never feels like work. Like it always, it feels natural to be able to like sit back and learn more about this thing that I love. Like it never work, even when I'm putting in the work. And I think that's just another. Like, if you know you're doing what you love, and that's the feeling every time. I love that. And I think even in that, it doesn't even necessarily mean that it's always easy, but it means you love it. So even the hard parts are something that you're like willing to do because it's awesome. Yes, sir. That's a good, that is a good ender. What do you think? I love it. And just because I really appreciate uh, Mr. Squatchy Inc. I appreciate uh, um, Ronnie Gunter, um, Comic Den, Ace Knuckles, and also Squatchy Inc. I want to give a shout out to uh, he put his Instagram handle on there, so I want you all to go check this out um, on Instagram at New World Chronicles. Um, and then you can also search Squatchy Inc. Uh, S Q U A T C H Y I N K. That's uh, their tattoo work. So for the comic, New World Chronicles, for the tattoo stuff, Squatchy Inc. So I'm going to make sure I get subscribed to you. I really appreciate you guys, and until uh, next Sunday, right, we're going to make this happen. Right. Um, you guys get out there and keep drawing and working on your projects and telling your stories and your lies. So, yeah, like, subscribe, check us out, and hey, leave in the comments why you tell stories. All right, guys, until next time, peace.